Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro faces Senate inquiry over the mishandling of the pandemic. Port workers stage walkout in solidarity with truck driver strike in the US. Biden administration to proceed with Trump era arms deal with UAE. And Amnesty reports civilian killings by Eritrean troops in the Tigray region. In our first story, Brazil's Senate has launched an inquiry into President Jair Bolsonaro's handling of the pandemic. The far-right leader has been repeatedly criticized for underplaying the crisis and for refusing to put adequate precautionary measures in time. Brazil has been among the worst hit countries in the world with over 360,000 deaths so far. The launch of the Senate inquiry was authorized by the Supreme Court on April 14th. According to reports, the investigator, investigation will examine allegations that Bolsonaro sabotaged social distancing measures. Other allegations include the targeting of local authorities who tried to implement lockdowns and negligence in acquiring vaccines. A major focus will also be the healthcare crisis in the capital of Manaus in the Amazona state. Oxygen shortages were reported in ICUs during the severe second wave in January. Al Jazeera had reported on January 22nd that over 100 patients had died of asphyxiation in over a week. Beyond the health crisis, people have also been suffering under worsening economic conditions. Over 116 million Brazilians do not have proper access to food by the end of 2020. These findings are part of a survey by the Brazilian Research Network on Sovereignty, Food and Nutritional Security. 19 million people also experienced severe food insecurity, stating that they were starving. The prices of food have also increased by over 15% amid widespread pandemic-induced unemployment. An estimated 12.8% of Brazil's population is living below the poverty line. The impact of the pandemic has been somewhat cushioned by the emergency cash transfer by the government last year. However, the assistance plan for this year is only a fraction of the original amount. It will include four monthly payments of around $50 for a much narrower set of informal work. We now go to the United States where over 60 workers staged a walkout in the city of Los Angeles on April 14th. Members of the Teamsters and International Longshore and Warehouse Unions participated in the action. Workers shut down one of the seven major terminals at the port of Los Angeles. The, port act, the protest action was held in solidarity with the strike by port workers in the state of California. Port truck drivers employed by Universal Logistics Holdings Limited announced their strike on April 12th. They stated that the company had denied them back pay and illegally fired truck drivers. The company reportedly also refused to bargain with or recognize the legally won union. Teamster, the Teamsters had filed charges against the ULH and its affiliates in the National Labor Relations Board. In the investigation, the board found that over 20 serious violations of federal labor law had been committed. It alleged that the ULH, ULH affiliate violated the law by terminating unionized drivers shortly after the electoral victory in 2019. The company then transferred work from the unionized facility to another ULH affiliate, Southern Counties Express. Drivers at this second facility were misclassified as independent contractors. Teamsters has argued that this practice is used to avoid compliance with laws that provide basic safety net protection to employees. These include paid sick leave, workers' compensation, and minimum wage. During the pandemic, this also includes the provision of protective gear at the work site. Continuing with the US, the Joe Biden administration has announced that it will proceed with arms sales to the United Arab Emirates. The deal worth $23 billion had been approved by the Trump administration. This was in exchange for UAE agreeing to sign the Abraham Accords to normalize relationships with Israel. Following widespread outrage, the sale was halted and placed under review by the Biden administration. A State Department official, however, announced on April 13 that the move would go forward. The Trump era deals include 50 advanced F-35 fighter jets and armed Reaper drones, among other weapons. While the Biden administration officially ended US support for the Yemen war, arms sales to UAE have raised serious concerns. The administration had stated in February that it would continue to provide support to the Saudis for defense purposes. Activists have warned that Saudi Arabia might try to justify its offensive against Yemen as an act of defense. The over five year long war in Yemen has plunged the country into a severe humanitarian crisis, and the UAE is part of the Saudi led coalition which has conducted this war. At least three civilians were killed by Eritrean troops in Ethiopia's Tigray region earlier this week. Amnesty International has also reported that at least 19 people were injured in the attack in the town of Adwa. The group has cited eyewitness accounts of Eritrean soldiers firing from the back of moving trucks. According to the staff at Aksum Referral Hospital, people had been shot in the chest, stomach, legs and hands. News agency Reuters later quoted an official from the Tigray interim government stating that the death toll was at least nine. The killings took place just weeks after Ethiopian Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed had announced Eritrean troops would withdraw from the region. He had previously refused to acknowledge their presence in Tigray for months. The violence in Tigray began in November 2020 when the Ethiopian government ordered troops into the region. Several reports by rights groups and the UN have since then documented severe human rights violations. These include looting, extrajudicial killings, and sexual and gendered violence. The UN reported in March that over 500 cases of rape had been reported in five clinics in the region. Medical group MSF had also reported targeted attacks on healthcare facilities and the looting of supplies. 
There is also a scarcity of food and almost 300,000 people are yet to receive any assistance. According to the Regional Bureau of Labor and Statistics, an estimated 1.7 million had been displaced as of last month. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Thank you.